There are certain organizations, certain teams in the NFL that I think the league is better off ultimately when they are at the top, when they are relevant, when they are making the playoffs, when they are a championship contending team. You know, people will point to maybe organizations like the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Dallas Cowboys fitting into that category. Maybe other people have other teams that they think fit into that category as well. But I think one team that definitely fits into that category is the Oakland Raiders because they have a very large national fan base. So if they're good, I think it's good for the league in general because you have a lot of Oakland Raiders fans that become even more engaged in their team and in the NFL brand as a whole. And at the same point in time, the Raiders being the Raiders and the history and the tradition that they have, there are a lot of people that hate the Raiders and everything that they stand for. So now you've got you know a great villain for a large, sizable portion of your NFL fan base. So in general, like I said, I believe ultimately everybody wins if the Oakland Raiders are relevant. And this is a you know prestigious to a degree franchise with a lot of greatness and excellence and championship pedigree and great players throughout their history, but not so much recently. And it's kind of a shame and it's kind of a sad thing, but it is what it is, hopefully. In some point in time, they get it back. I hope they do. Uh, so anyways, I'm here to talk today about the top five Oakland Raiders players of all time. And I think I've come up with a good list, but surely a list that is going to get some of you rumbling and some of you stumbling and fumbling. And that's fine. That's part of the reason why I do these. I want to get engaged in debates and conversations, and I want to hear your thoughts on these things. And I want you to debate me on this stuff. I love it. I welcome it. Um, but when it comes to honorable mentions, there were quite a number that didn't make the list. You know, several guys that are enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton and a few others that maybe you could argue for different reasons should be enshrined. I look at Hall of Famers like Fred Bolitnikoff and Ted, the Mad Stork Hendricks and Dave Casper and Howie Long and Mike Haynes. I look at other guys that some people will make an argument for that could be in the Hall of Fame, guys like Ken Stabler. A guy that, in my opinion, definitely should be in Clint Brand, Cliff Branch, excuse me, maybe a Jack Tatum, a Tim Brown, who I also think will get in there someday. A lot of great players that typify the greatness of the Raiders. Some of you will say Marcus Allen, eh, whatever. Yeah, I guess he's an honorable mention. He's a Hall of Famer, technically. But ultimately, this to me is about determining the five greatest Oakland Raiders of all time. Greatness at their position, greatness in terms of their impact, significance, and meaning to the organization. It wasn't that surprising to me as I went through and I compiled this list and put together this list that a lot of these players hadn't played for the organization in over 30 years. That maybe is an indication of what the Raiders once were and what they no longer are. But anyways, five greatest Oakland Raiders players of all time. Number five, sure to get a lot of you stirred up and talking, is Ray Guy. The 23rd overall selection out of Southern Miss, a punter, in the 1973 NFL Draft. Now, this was a very radical thing for Al Davis to do at this time. Not only did he take a punter in the first round, he took a punter from Southern Miss who had a broken foot. Now, this was at a time where the Oakland Raiders special teams were very bad, and he thought that Ray Guy could be a game changer for his team, for his organization, and in the league in general. And, you know, this is at a time where Al Davis would roll the dice and it would come up looking great. And Ray Guy definitely made him look like a genius. If you knew you were going to get a Ray Guy out of a punter, you would probably take him every year in the first round at some point in time, right around the 23rd pick. He was, during his 14 seasons with the Oakland Raiders, he was the preeminent punter in football. Notable for his great hang time on his punts. Notable for the way that he affected field position where he set up the defense for success. He was known for the coffin corner kick, a seven-time Pro Bowler, a three-time All-Pro, a member of the 1970s NFL All-Decade team, a member of the NFL's 75th anniversary team, still widely viewed and classified as the greatest punter in NFL history, and also a part of three Oakland Raiders Super Bowl championship teams. And don't kid yourself, Ray Guy was very instrumental in making that possible. So, and that's why, in part, because of his dominance and his position compared to everybody else that's ever played there, um, because of his impact, meaning, and significance to the Oakland Raiders, I'm putting Ray Guy at number five on my list, in part two, because I think he fits the Al Davis mold for so many years of being the great Oakland Raider, being a misfitter, in this case, 
being somebody that nobody else would have taken a chance on in the first round, a punter out of Southern Miss with a broken foot, and Al Davis did with Ray Guy. And this is the type of stuff that used to work for Al back in the day. And finally, Ray Guy got his place. He's going to be enshrined in Canton as part of the 2014 Pro Football Hall of Fame class, and it was long, long overdue for sure. Number four, we go to old man Willie Willie Brown who was a key cog in those great Raiders defenses of the late 60s through the mid-70s. He spent 12 seasons with the Oakland Raiders. He was a seven-time Pro Bowler, a four-time All-Pro, a member of the all-time AFL team between his work with the Denver Broncos and then later the Oakland Raiders, a member of the 1970s NFL All-Decade team. He was a part of the Raiders' first Super Bowl championship team. Um, you're talking about a guy, again, Pro Football Hall of Famer, the best defensive back in the history of the Oakland Raiders organization, in my opinion. And that's why, again, being a part of a championship team and being such a consistent, steady hand for so many years. And again, odd, too, in the fact that he was counterculture to the guys like the Jack Tatums and the George Atkinsons of the world. Here was Willie Brown. He was an entirely different reserve type of individual, a great player for so many years, definitely belongs at number four on this list. Number three, I will go to the trenches, which was such a big key for what Al Davis and John Madden in particular, and even later on Tom Flores, wanted to do with the passing game. They wanted to bombs away. They wanted to stretch the field vertically. And as a result, you needed to have an offensive line that could provide your quarterback with a lot of time in order to do so. And Art Shell definitely was a big part of that. He was a third-round selection out of Maryland Eastern Shore in the 1968 NFL Draft. Again, another one of those great Al Davis type of finds. During his 15 seasons with the Oakland Raiders, he was an eight-time Pro Bowler, a two-time All-Pro, a part of two Super Bowl championship teams, a member of the 1970s NFL All-Decade team, viewed as one of the better left tackles in the history of the National Football League, and a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You know, you see some of the old shots back in the day, of, in particular of Ken the Snake Stabler, just sitting back there and standing back there in the pocket and having all types of time to go through his reads and progressions. It's in large part due to the protection that he was afforded because of a premier great left tackle in the history of the National Football League, like an Art Shell, who again, you know, helped make the Raiders who the Raiders were during the late 60s and the 70s into the early 80s, just like the number two person on this list, Gene Upshaw, did. Here was a guy, 17th overall pick out of a tiny Texas A&M Kingsville in the 1967 NFL draft. He was a guy that was drafted for one primary purpose by Al Davis. He was drafted to stop Buck Buchanan. Buck Buchanan was tearing up the Oakland Raiders when he was playing for the Kansas City Chiefs. He drafted Gene Upshaw with the thought in mind that we have to stop Buck Buchanan. And that's what Gene Upshaw did. And he stopped a lot of other people during his 15-year NFL career. Between 1967 and 1981, he was a seven-time Pro Bowler, a five-time All-Pro, a member of two Super Bowl championship teams, a member of the NFL 75th anniversary team, Pro Football Hall of Famer. And again, when I talk about you know all that protection, all that time that Stabler used to have in the passing game or the big massive holes that the Raiders running backs and fullbacks used to have in the running game, it came because of Art Shell, and it came even more so because of Gene Upshaw, who was one of the great guards in the history of the National Football League for many, many years. And again, you know, he brought the attitude. He was a great leader on that Oakland Raiders offense, brought that physicality, that toughness, that kind of Raider mentality, that striving for excellence that few other players did. And that's why he's number two on this list. But ultimately, he couldn't be number one because I think number one was another offensive lineman. And this was Mr. Raider for so many years, the first great player in the organization, that bedrock for so many years, and that is, of course, uh, Double Zero Jim Otto. You're talking about a guy who, during his 15 seasons of playing for the Oakland Raiders, he started with him at the very beginning of the AFL, going through to the NFL. Here was a 12-time AFL-slash-NFL All-Star, a 10-time All-Pro, a member of the all-time AFL team, a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, a guy that is viewed as one of the top five to seven centers in the history of the National Football League, and for so many years was the best player on the Oakland Raiders team. And think about this line in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s in particular for the Oakland Raiders. You had Art Shell at left tackle, you had Gene Upshaw at left guard, and then you had Jim Otto, double zero at center. That's scary. 
one of the great left sides of an offensive line in NFL history. And Gene Otto, or Jim Otto, excuse me, might have been the best of them all. He was the most dominant player at his position during his time. Like I said, a member of the all-time AFL team. And again, when you talk about the greatness of the Raiders, you know, it's kind of sad and tragic in a way that Jim Otto played in one Super Bowl, but he never won a Super Bowl. He was he missed out on those three Raiders teams that won Super Bowls in 76 and 80 and 83. He just he didn't last long enough. It was at the wrong time. But again, a great Raider, the first true great Raider, and I think even Al Davis himself said many times that he was the Raiders. This was Mr. Raider and the greatest Oakland Raider of all time, and I happen to agree that Jim Otto, double zero, is the greatest Oakland Raider of all time. Again, let me know what you think of my list, Raiders fans. If you think I'm nuts, if you think I'm on the money, uh, give me your list of the top five greatest Raiders of all time. Next up, I believe I move on to the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm getting close to the end of this series.